I think one of the challenges is to, um, what Deborah addressed about evil people don't think they're evil. Um, that that three-dimensionality of all your characters is something that is so easy to get away from and, and to become to become preachy rather than exploring an issue, exploring all sides of an issue, exploring why all of us do the things we do. I think there's a tendency to paint things in black and white. I, I used to have this exercise I gave my writers years ago to pick um, any any issue. It, it didn't have to connect to any story or even potentially connect to any story. Pick any issue and write a paragraph that on your position on that issue. And then write a second paragraph from the point of view of somebody who fundamentally disagrees with you. The vast majority are simply people who disagree with you. And I think stories are much, much better if they honestly explore issues and honestly explore motives. I mean, I, I, I'd have people write, me, write scripts and I go, why does the guy do this here? Why does the big corporate executive do this here? And the writer would say, because he's evil. And I'll go, so that's the analysis you made. He walked in the room and said, well, I'm evil, what should I do? Uh, that's just, that person thought they were making the right choice then. And uh, I, that's the, the biggest problem I see. It, it, it becomes preachy. And I, I came into writing uh, kind of from a survival mode. I was working as an actor and a singer, so I like writing. And I hated the roles for women. I hated them. And I just, one day I was on a television show and I went and I said, I want to write an episode. And they won't let me move this. And I sat down and I wrote the episode and I brought it in. And the response was, oh, okay. And they gave me copious notes thinking I would go away and not do anything, and I answered every note, and I rewrote the script, and I probably rewrote it seven times. But we shot that show, and I realized that I could take power into my hands if I became a writer, and it changed my life. Because suddenly, I was writing things that, especially in network television, in those days, was being seen by you know 20 million people. And so in a night, it was, you know, Shakespeare didn't, his plays didn't play. If they hadn't played for 500 years before that, many people saw them. And we have that opportunity to speak to people. So the one thing that I want to say to any writer is, write what you're passionate about, but write something that's meaningful. And like David says, that makes you think. Don't tell me what to think, but say to me, what if? And let your, respect your audience enough. And if you do that, and you put that on the page with the passion of what you're writing, people are going to sit up and take notice. And then somebody else said, the, the one other thing is, don't just write one script and rewrite it and rewrite it and rewrite it. Write 30 scripts. Because the more that you write, the better you become. This is sort of a way of paraphrasing what Deborah and David said, that I think the greatest danger for writers is, is getting cynical. Uh, what I see over and over again with people I, I know is they, they write the one script in their heart, and it doesn't sell, it doesn't get on the air, and they say, oh, well, that didn't work. I better just go write what they want me to write. I better go write something called commercial. And that, that, that becomes the kiss of death. That, that, uh, I, I think that, that uh, it, it's really hard to stay true to your voice, but the minute you spend all your time reading Deadline.com to see what sells and think, you know, okay, I, I just... You know, they bought this and they bought that, so if I make something that combines this and that, then I'll, I'll sell my script. It's, it's not how it works. I mean, really, one of the great things of cable is that, uh, and I think this is also true of certain broadcast shows, but, is that show, TV shows, really unlike movies, are built around character and world. Um, plot is what drives the feature film business, plot and, and idea, um, but character and world is really what drives television. And it all starts from character first, uh, and if you, all of you have grown up in, in some world or another, all of you have been exposed to some world or another that, that is part of who you are and part of what you, what you can express. And the specificity of, of a world, whether it's the world of the New Jersey neighborhood that mobsters live in, whether it's the world of a, uh, of a biker community, whether it's the world of the Mormons in, in, in Big Love, I think as long as you're writing about that truthfully, it, you don't have to worry about being, it being commercial. 
we now live in a world where people write spec pilots that people read, um, and as they and 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 we buy quite a lot of them. Uh, and and there's a lot of people, whether there are agents, whether there are producers, whether there are studios or networks, there are a lot of executives looking for new material. That's and and you can you now have the opportunity to create a world and put it on paper and get people to read it. And you know, television is pretty hungry for for new voices. I mean, the, the good side of it being the quote golden age of television drama is that there's a lot of opportunity for, for writers to be employed. So as long as you stick to your voice, you actually do a job.